We are also considered working with subnetting and separating out networks into smaller pieces and connecting them together with routers whenever we start working with IP addresses. Some people might encounter thinking about why do we even subnet at all and if it would just be easier if we subnet directly from one computer to another computer. I will tell the answer for that. Well, probably it will be easier to subnet directly from one computer to another. But the problem here is, it will cost a lot of money for us to have the equipment that was able to do that for everybody who was on the internet for instant of the same time. So, not only do we have these technical limitations, but cost limitations as well associated with that. Take note that there is also security concerns to think about. We often just prefer having routers in between for us not to let servers that contains our private information just like on our credit card to directly communicate to all of the devices on the network. We prefer to have routers in between so that we can subnet or different subnets inside of the network and connect them up directly through these routers where we have control about the flow of data. Three different things before configuring an IP address in a computer creating the subnet. The first thing we need is an IP address of course, a unique IP address rather to be specific. We also need to know the subnet mask of this particular device. Take this an example, for instance yours is 255.0.0.0. It is indicated on the virtual sign to our group that you have to use that subnet mask to know what subnet happens to belong to and what in most that information. It can decide to send them the information that it has to a local machine or may realize to get where this need to go. The third thing that we need to know is that if we need traffic to go outside of this local subnet, it has to go through what we call default gateway. It is said that this is nothing more than an IP router to be able to take this data of the information that we are sending to send it outside of our local subnet. Now, what part of it is the IP address and what part of it is the network it happens to be on? Well, I can say that is the good side of having that subnet mask. For us to be clear on how these are being laid out, we should put our host address or IP address and put our subnet mask together. There was no need to have a lot of different subnets when the internet was first getting started. There is still no reason to have multiple networks at all location and one more thing. The idea behind subnetting is that you could look at the IP address of a particular machine and you would know automatically what the subnet mask was of that particular device. It was put into a class of subnets and it, it is really meant that this was all, all automatic. If we then assign the IP address to a device, we immediately knew what that subnet mask was. Today, it's not like that anything before. In fact, we haven't used this class-based subnetting architecture since 1993. We still use some of these terms but not any longer when it comes to the process of automatically associating subnet mask with an IP address. Take a look at this illustration. When we refer to something that was a class A subnet, this have the subnet mask of 255.0.0.0. If this was classified as a class B subnet, the subnet mask was 255.255.0.0. And lastly, the class C subnet mask was always 255.255.255.0. By basing on the first octet, that is an IP address, we determine whether something was a class A, B, or C address. Look at the illustration. If the number starts with the number 1 to 126, it will be automatically put in a class A. The subnet mask for the device was always 255.0.0.0. Because it was a class A address, and you can have a total of 128 networks with over 16 million hosts per network. Why we jump from 126 to 128 then? It is because 127 is the beginning of an IP address that is reversed.
this starts with 128 all the way up to 191. It's a class B address. That's because of the leading bits of that particular IP address and when there are a subnet of this way with 255.255.0.0 that means we could have 16,384 networks and on each of those networks we can have over 65,000 hosts one very common class C subnet was one when your IP started with 192 all the way up to 223 and you could have over 2 million networks on each network you could have a total of 254 hosts and default subnet mass for that class C subnet mass 255.255.255.0. There are class D and class E subnet mass and classes as well. As you can see the numbers associated with class D which is multicast, those are 224 over 239. In class E were reserved not defined as well and we don't see IP addresses that were assigned automatically to a class having a any delineation there are between networks and hosts on those networks. For comment, 1918 was created because we're going to run out of addresses but by more and more people who are being connected to internet. This allows us to create inside of our organization our own private addresses. We can assign IP addresses inside our local networks. The IP address ranges as shown in the illustration. It is common for the large organizations to have the 10 dot network or this IP address ranging from 10.0.0 to 10.255.255.255 a class A obviously has over 16 million number of addresses, 8 bits long, 255.0.0.0 in decimal and 24 bits host ID size. We have another private range that we can use such as 172.16.0.0 to 172.31.255.255.255. The default subnet mass for that would be 12 bits, which is not decimal. That comes up to be 200.55.240.0.0. And the last one, 192.16.0.0 to 192.168.255.255.255. This has a default subnet mask that is 16 bits long or in decimal that would be 255.255.0.0.